Hello. I'm wearing my uh, super ugly crazy shirt tonight. The one I got, I think I got on a discount for four dollars. If I seem kind of sluggish, it's because I've been like deathly sick the past three days. Yesterday I had a temperature of nearly 102. Yeah. Whoa. I mean, whoa, I felt bad. You don't want to eat when you feel bad. You can't sleep when you feel bad. Doesn't that suck? <laughs> it really does. Super painful when you feel that sick. At least I had the wherewithal to turn the lava lamp on early. Now, before making uh, this video and going through the details of these videos, many of these points I've actually talked about years ago, and I know there are a couple other people that have talked about this uh, specifically. So, if you hear this and you've heard it uh, before, I've heard somebody else talk about that, you know, I had to make a disclaimer. So, yes, there have been a couple of people talk about that. Um, uh, there might have been another YouTube video, but I've never seen it, and I've talked about it many countless times of the identical parallels between earliest Buddhism. Mara, by the way, is the Pali word for Satan. You know, uh, Gautama is uh, tempted by Mara. Mara is a reference to the psychophysical self. Spiritual polarization necessitates that there is polarization between the terrestrial self and the spiritual self because they are at odds with each other. The ancient passage goes that the self is always at war with what is not self, and by self I mean capital S, sort of the soul. Same is true of uh, Jesus in the desert, you know, where Satan tempts him, like, you know, if you do this, I'll give you the world, if you do that, and I'll give you the world, you know. And of course, all of Christianity actually thinks that those are two totally different entities. You know, you got Jesus over here, and you got Satan over there. It's the exact same thing, spiritual polarization, where there's a division and polarization between the terrestrial self and the transcendent or spiritual self. This is actually about uh, astrology. And by the way, the Platonists have poo-pooed extensively astrology. Uh, Plotinus himself wrote a nice dissertation in the Aeneids, it's called, Are the Stars the Causes? And of course the answer is no. So I stand firmly behind the Platonists and the rational, logical, wise, uh, monistic metaphysicians who have distinctly and very, very forcibly said that, no, the stars are not the causes of anything down here. You know, it's completely ridiculous to think that. Ironically, and I'm going to go over some passages, you can look these up. The Bible itself uh, is an enormous amount of astrology, and specifically the Zodiac. There are more passages than the ones I'm going to quote here. But interestingly enough, and anybody that knows anything at all will know that any branch of current Christianity, Protestants or Catholics, will say, oh, astrology is a bunch of cultism. Pure evil will actually just come out and say, well, it's actually satanic. And you engage in astrology, you're dabbling with, uh, you know, the devil's playthings. It's like, well, I don't care if they think that, but astrology is front to back, left to right, completely saturated in the, the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. It's just undeniable. Uh, Job uh, 38, this is passages 31 through 33, says, uh, Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? It is asked uh, by God. He said, Can you loosen Orion's belt? Orion's belt has had extreme significance in uh, ancient Egyptian, like the King's Tunnels that actually point specifically to Orion's belt. So you can look that up by Robert Boval, who wrote a few books on this. And uh, God asks, do you know the ordinances of the heaven? This is a direct reference to Mazaroth. Mazaroth, and you can go look this up, is about prognostication. Oth in uh, Hebrew is a reference to prognostication, which of course the zodiac is uh, meant to be the premise thereof. But Mazaroth is a reference, not my opinion or feeling or belief, is about uh, the zodiac. Uh, according to the Bible, God created the zodiac, which of course... Uh, far, far more ancient, ancient Persia, ancient Egypt, you know, you know, the Judeo-Christian God, 
you know, the idea of the zodiac permeates. We can find zodiac. I forget which king's chamber in uh, the Valley of the Kings. They found the zodiac uh, painted on the ceiling, but it's very, very beautiful. Um, Job uh, 38, 36, heavenly bodies that uh, rule the earth. He's talking about the, actually the division of the zodiac and being uh, the uh, symbolism. And of course, uh, those who follow the Zohar and uh, Kabbalah, this is all interwoven. By the way, most of Kabbalah is actually stolen from Neoplatonism, but that's a matter for another discussion. Genesis 1:14. let them be for signs. The signs in the Hebrew is off. It's a, div uh, a divination. It's about things that are actually to come. John 14:2. In my father's house, there are many. It's usually translated as mansion. It says, in my father's house, there are many abodes. This is a reference to the signs of the zodiac and of astrology. Of course, the zodiac is a reference to the kingdom. We're referring to the kingdom of God or the kingdom of men or the kingdom of beasts, as the old uh, saying goes in Roman Catholicism, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And the will as implying the actual prognostications are off within the zodiac, which is, according to the Old Testament, written by God himself. We are, of course, living underneath the zodiac from this. Uh, and this is, I mean, when you talk about uh, true occult, this is all occultistic. It is not rational. It's not logical. Once again, poo-pooed by the Platonists, the Pythagoreans, the Neoplatonists endlessly. They poo-pooed the idea the stars were the causes. This theme of uh, zodiac signs and following your signs and what your horoscope is. And, you know, up until recently, I remember when people used to read their horoscope in the newspaper and they kind of lived their lives by the horoscope, and some people have uh, ignorantly told me, said millionaires or normal people don't follow the zodiac, but billionaires do. <laughs> There's a couple instances of some billionaires that have actually hired experts in astrology, you know, to guide them, but that doesn't mean that that's how they made their billions, but I've heard that quote many, many, many times. We got, uh, of course, the division of our watch. We got, uh, you know, 1 through 12. A dozen eggs, the 12 tribes of Israel. And the 12 tribes of Israel is not literal. And we're not 12 tribes of Israel. This is a reference to the Zodiac, the 12 uh, ordinances of the Zodiac. 12 precious stones on the high uh, priest's breastplate who was able to, uh, you know, touch the Ark of the Covenant. You know, once again, 12 hours in your watch. The 12 apostles of Jesus Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, on and on and on. I couldn't care less about this, honestly. Uh, in Revelation, we actually have the 12 gates of the celestial city. And that's Revelations 21, 12. The 12 kinds of precious stones of the celestial city. 12 stars of the crowns. The 12 trees of life, which bear the crops of fruit in each month. The 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Janai, I mean, nobody cares about these names. I mean, really? Do you, I mean, even if you're a Christian, do you really care about those names? There are 12 of them. Number 12 is used 189 times in the Old and New Testament collectively. They're the 12 gods of ancient Egypt, uh, who's among which Hercules was uh, the chief. The four seasons, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're actually centered around the sun. There is a reference, and this is Old English. You could look this up. It's called Lazy O where U and O are used interchangeably, sun and sun. The people that talk about their son, ah, my son, you know, he's the, he's the light of my life. Correct. Sun and sun, S-O-N-S-U-N. All the way back to Old English, these are used interchangeably. The idea of sun being the light, and this, of course, is the, uh, the light bringer who... Uh, and I'll get into the resurrection uh, here in a second. But all of this is a, a fairy tale. I'm not saying that this person didn't actually live. I've always uh, believed that uh, he did. I could be wrong on that fact. But all of this follows a fairy tale. And uh, the zodiac and astrology throughout the Old and New Testament is 100% undeniable. So we have the four seasons, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are pointed towards, uh, you know, the risen one who, you know, 
uh, was dead for three days and rose again. This is a reference, of course, to Jesus, the risen Savior, you know, just as the sun, rise, sun rises. We always have Jesus, of course, on the cross, but something that's easily one of the oldest symbols on earth, and I can actually say that I'm an expert on symbolism. I think I've got every book ever written on symbolism. I've seen things a lot of people haven't seen, and I could write a book about that overnight. I've got certainly the notes for same is that the symbol of uh, the, uh, the equal armed cross, it's usually in a circle. By the way, I don't have it behind me here. I've got a stamp over here that I actually put and made myself, and I actually put on my leather goods. Right now, this is in silver. It's a circle with the equal armed cross in the middle. This is easily one of the most uh, ancient uh, symbols. It's found in ancient Egypt, India, Native Americans, on and on. It's just everywhere, every corner of the globe. This is the intersection of all possibilities. This is a reference to sun, but also to, to pan, the Greek word pan or holos, entirety. i talk about that in just a second. I actually stamped that on a lot of my leather goods using uh, some leather ink. I, I made this, I actually hand carved it out of a piece of uh, this carvable rubber and stamp it on a lot of uh, my leather goods, the larger leather goods, like the bag. People say, what does it mean? Specifically, if you look at the circle and the cross, it's a representation for Earth, but really it's a reference to the solar absolute and uh, the four divisions of which are the four seasons, same as the four disciples of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We, of course, have the 12 apostles of Jesus and the famous Last Supper painting the one to immediately the right of Jesus uh, is a female. You can go look at that. And uh, that's the zodiac sign, which one of them had to be in a female of his 12 apostles, because they're not 12 apostles. They're the, four sign, the 12 signs of the zodiac. Because one of the signs of the zodiac is a female, so necessitatively one of them must be a female. And you can see that in the famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci. He knew that. He actually had access to the really very, very hard to find works, and he actually figured out uh, the secret uh, symbolism of this fairy tale of uh, the Bible, and she's depicted as a woman. It's Virgo, you know? The female zodiac sign Virgo. I mean, you think that's a coincidence or something? Yeah, if you want to read about this, you know, the, the ignorance and uh, laughable irrationality of astrology and the zodiac, you could read uh, Plotinus's... Uh, little article on that in the Enneads. It's called, Are the Stars the Causes? And we actually have the age of Taurus uh, from 4400 BC to 2200 BC. And all religions across the entire globe, the Persians, the great, on and on and on, they, they all understood that this was the age of Taurus. Um, the Israelites uh, worshiping the golden calf, the age of Taurus, they actually find of uh, periods which is almost non-existent because it's so old, but the ancient Egyptians, we do have many examples of. 2200 B.C. and prior is the age of Taurus. Two's 2150 years of each intersessional change in the 12 arcs of the zodiac, which make up the solar cycle, the cycle of God, supposedly. But, I mean, the zodiac and astrology existed far, 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 far prior to Judeo-Christianity, way prior to um, that there is uh, no contesting and no debating. Um, after that, from 2000 BC to 1 AD, what happened around 1 AD? Hmm. Oh, there's the fairy tale of, you know, the guy in uh, from Jerusalem, Nazareth. Yeah. We have uh, between uh, 2000 BC to 1 AD the uh, the age of Aries, Aries the Ram. We see countless depictions within this period of uh, blowing of ram's horns all throughout iconography is the heralding of the, the age of Aries. Every ancient culture acknowledged the age of Aries. It doesn't matter if it was Persian or Egyptian or Indian. We still have the uh, sacred cow of India, so that, uh, you know, that irrational uh, astrology nonsense uh, still exists in present-day India. Um, still is carried on. We are in the uh, last days of Pisces, which is the double fish. We are, a lot of people think well, we're in the end times, but that's true, but we're only in the end time of Pisces. The uh, Christian icon 
You used to see them in the back of everybody's car as a little fish. It wasn't the double fish, but it was still the fish. John 19, Jesus feeds the masses with two fish. Remember, he magically converts two fish into a gazillion fish to feed the throngs and the masses. Um, the most ancient Christian inscription is, go look this up, two fish, the age of Pisces. Yeah. Um, in the town of Megiddo, they were going to expand a church, and they found uh, a, a more ancient uh, church there, and they uncovered the floor mosaic, and uh, it was made in the time of Pisces, and in the center of the floor mosaic was two fish in the center of a solar sun. That's the sun in the age of uh, Pisces. Next, of course, is the age of Aquarius, when Aquarius' uh, uh, astrology is the water bearer. Uh, in Luke 22.10, Jesus' followers ask Jesus, uh, who is about to die, he said, where are we to go after you have left us? Something to that effect. And Jesus says that uh, you shall meet a man that is uh, bearing a pitcher of water, and you shall follow him therein. In other words, they're going to follow uh, Jesus uh, into uh, the age of Aquarius. And uh, I think some Christians have interpreted that as that when the age of Aquarius starts, that when, that's when he's going to return. Well, you can believe whatever you want. but Anyway, the four seasons, uh, winter, spring, summer, and fall, these are the four coordinates of... Uh, Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and John that are centered around the sun. I don't care if you spell it S-O-N or S-U-N. We're talking about, you know, the light of the world. The light of the world, of course, is the sun. The sun, however, quite literally, is a gigantic ball of plasma. You know, there are a gazillion suns throughout this universe. Our galaxy alone has God knows how many gazillion, uh, likewise, uh, stars in it. You know, the arrangement that we see here on Earth, which is, of course, the zodiac, it depends on where you're at, the arrangement will look totally different. It's completely ridiculous to think the arrangement of these stars is uh, controlling your life and my life. That's astrology. That's the zodiac. Now, modern Christianity will say the astrology and the zodiac is the work of Satanism. It's occultic. It's like, well, it is occultic, but all of that permeates the entirety of the Bible. And to refute that is 100% undeniable. It's like, what are you going to make of that? They just got done saying that astrology is satanic, but the Bible is full of astrology. It's just The whole thing is full of it. Um, this is governed around the equal-armed cross throughout the entire world, the four seasons. And, of course, that's the reason why I carved that, not because of Christianity. This is a very, 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 a very, very ancient symbol far predating Judeo-Christianity. That's why I carved this out by hand and use it as the stamp on a lot of my larger leather works. This is not a man on the cross, but the sun. Once again, I don't care if you spell it S-U-N or S-O-N, same meaning. Uh, the four seasons and the circuit of life. The Vikings, the Greeks, the Indians, the Irish, the Native Americans all over had the same symbol. Coptic Christians use this as their cross, the uh, equal-armed uh, cross with a circle around it. The sun arises again, and when we talk about Easter, uh, the sun uh, finishes its uh, disappearance in December. By the way, the, the sun is dead for three days. Once again, S-O-N, S-U-N. Remember somebody was dead for three days and rose again? Well, when the sun dips on December the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, it doesn't rise. It uh, dies, doesn't move one way or another. It dies in, uh, I think, 21st through 23rd. Uh, but on the 24th, it rises up one degree, and it keeps rising and rising and rising. And, of course, you have the approach of spring. So let me see if I could put these two things together. Something died for three days and rose again. And the sun itself, up in the sky, that sun. <laughs> Which they both think is that's the sun up there. Same sun. My sun's your sun, you know. Mine's the son of God, who is also God. It's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, these two things that died for three days and they rose again. 
That's exactly what our physical sun does on 22nd through 23rd. It doesn't move, doesn't move one way or another. It's reached the maximum against the uh, northern hemisphere. Most of the world, what, 95% of the world back then lived in the northern hemisphere, essentially 95%, okay, don't put me to task on that one. And it starts to rise again after it was dead for three days. The rising, all of this is a fairy tale. All of this is a zodiac slash astrology fairy tale. I will hearken back to where I started, that the Platonists, the Pythagoreans, and the Neoplatonists, they poo-pooed astrology and the zodiac because it's absolute uh, jabberwocky poppycock. It's just, uh, the word occult is actually used as a pejorative for anything that's not Judeo-Christian. You're in occultism. Well, you think anything that's not Judeo-Christian is a pejorative occultic. But the Bible is permeated. I mean, it says right here, Maseroth, Job, Job, I said Job, Job, <laughs> Job 38 through 32. Maseroth is the Zodiac. That's not my opinion. That's a fact. It said God created the Zodiac. You know, the heavens are written with the prognosticative signs, which is the off. Yeah the oath to prognosticate, to see into the future. Do you really think there's 12 tribes of Israel? Do you really think there were 12 apostles of Jesus? You know, the 12 of this, the 12 of that, the 12 stones on the priest's breastplate, on and on and on and on. 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament. Um, 12 gods of... You really think that's like, oh, it's just a total coincidence? Well, it's not. This is an astrological fairy tale about, you know, the life bringer, the son of the world, which the sun up there is also, too, the son of the world that brings life and nourishment. And, you know, we, we don't live except for uh, uh, generosity of the sun. The sun that they're talking about in here that walked around in two feet is a personification, anthropomorphization, actually, of that sun. But they're both in reference and connecting to exactly the same thing. They're talking about this sun, but they're referring to that sun. But in the ignorance of their religious uh, fervor, they don't realize that they're both one and the same thing. Just as Christians do not realize either that the idea that Jesus was having a, a, uh, a battle in the desert with Satan. It's like, well, you got, you know, the evil dude over here and the Savior over here. It's like, no. No, no, they're the same person. Do a spiritual polarization. S exact same story. F 600 years earlier than Christianity came along. 600 years, okay? 600 BCE. Gautama's fight, battle, Mara's tempting him, Mara the tempter. Well, Mara, it says right in Sutana that Mara is the uh, five khandas, i.e. the psychophysical attributes. Rupa, Veda, Masana, Sankara, Vinyana, i.e. psychophysicality. Well, psychophysicality, no, in other words, Gautama, or what, you know, the ignorant people call Buddha, and went over here, and, you know, the evil one over here. No, they were the same person struggling of the same body, except one is not of the body, it's occupying the body. Mara or Satan would be the radio. Yeah? Jesus and Gautama would be the signal, and the signal is not in the radio. The signal is everywhere and nowhere. But these two things... Precipitation, 50%. Inhabiting one entity at the same time, even though there's no signal in the radio, they are odds and they're fighting against each other. This spiritual polarization. Which there is no video or article anywhere in this world except for me, by the way, I pointed this out years ago about spiritual polarization. You can't understand true metaphysics or the fundamental principles behind these religions, and I'm not interested in religion, no way, no how. I don't care what people believe. The most fundamentally crude and base thing on earth is belief. Do you believe what I believe? I don't believe I do. But you don't believe what I believe, then I believe I don't like you, and therefore I believe you're my enemy. <laughs> Everything is about silly belief. You believe in this, you believe in that. I don't care what people believe. I'm interested in facts, logic, and wisdom. What is rational? True. So, modern Christians poo-poo um, astrology and the zodiac. It's evil! 
Well, they can say whatever they want, but that Bible that they... they <laughs> it is absolutely permeated from cover to cover with this. And that's not my opinion, girlfriend. That's a fact. I don't understand this. People don't want to know. I think Chris Rock did a bit like that. I don't know that stuff. I don't even want to know that stuff. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> a lot of people are like it. I don't want to know that stuff, man. It was a comedy bit of his. It was funny, though. Like, I don't know that stuff, man. I don't want to know that stuff. <laughs> a lot of people are like that. I hope you like these videos. If you ever want to contact me, my information is the link below. Any donations always warmly welcome. You send me an email telling me how much you hated this video. If I seem slightly out of it, once again, I will remind you, I'm kind of sweating now. I have a temperature right now. And I've been sick as a dog for the past three days. Like, woof! Woof, woof, woof! <laughs> really sick! I hope I recover soon. Thank you so much for watching. And peace out, Girl Scout. Lux Iveritas. At least I had the uh, <clears throat> the lava lamp up and running in time for this video. Yeah.